This video is all about the material optimization process I used to achieve the Benchmark Division C tower. I wound up building five towers to reach that final build, and I'll explain the details of each along with my thinking on why I chose what I did. Let's jump right in with my first build. I stuck with the same design for all these towers using 10 layers of X cross bracing with a horizontal piece at the very bottom and top. Definitely experiment with this design as you explore your own builds this season. This is just meant to be a good starting point. The first thing I needed to decide was how heavy to make the legs. From prior experience, I knew that 0.7 gram legs worked pretty well for four leg towers. Now we only have three legs supporting the same mass, so why not try something 33% more and make them around 0.93 grams. Note that I needed to use source legs that were over 2 grams to get these 0.9 gram legs. Remember that we need to sand away more than 50% of the material to get the triangular legs. For the cross members, I used 1 16th by 1 16th balsa. The length of these pieces is larger than with our four leg towers, so I went fairly conservative here. Here it is right before testing, and the total mass turned out to be 6.504 grams. Let's see how this initial stab in the dark turned out. Remember, this is a bonus design, so we're really hoping it holds over 15 kilograms. Here is the live testing of the tower. I wanted to make sure I got a failure, so I had over 20 kilograms of sand in the autoloader. For all these tests, I like to start out slow to minimize the bucket movement, but once things are settled, increase the speed of the loading to minimize the time the tower is under maximum load. I could already tell it was going to hold at least close to the target 15 kilogram load. Let's see what the final result was. It held 18.513 kilograms for a bonus score of 3,075. This would have easily survived during the normal 15 kilogram testing and could have most likely been reused many times. I was very happy with this result and was pleased to see that triangular legs worked well. Even though I knew this was a good result, I wanted to explore the design a bit more to see if I could do better. Because the tower held well over 18 kilograms, there's not much to be gained from the high speed, but it never hurts to see if we can figure out what failed first. With this tower, it appears that there was a cross member failure on layer number seven near the top, where one of the glue joints breaks free. That means that the legs were plenty strong as well as the cross bracing. So for the next tower, I'll lower the mass of both. For the second build, I decided to decrease the mass of both the legs and the cross bracing. I dropped the leg mass by about 20% and the cross bracing material by about 18%. I also changed the size of the cross bracing to be 1 20th by 1.5 millimeters. As expected, the total mass of this complete build was about 20% less than the previous build and hit the scale at 5.424 grams. Let's see how this one does. All of these live tests look the same so I'll shorten them to only see the exciting part. This one held 12.865 kilograms for a score of 2372. This tower wouldn't have achieved the bonus, so its score is just its actual efficiency. It's interesting to note that this tower was about 20% lighter than the last one, but it held about 44% less. So we really need to figure out what part failed first to make our next adjustment. It's really close, but I think one of the bottom two layers of the cross bracing fails first, which then causes an immediate failure of the legs at the bottom. We can use this information to see if we can reduce the mass for the next build. For this build, I wanted to try another light tower. I actually used slightly stronger legs and went back to 1 16th inch square cross members. I did use very light material for these cross members, hoping the larger size would help. If you recall from my assembly video, this build was the first one I used the jig stand so I could build the sides level. If you do the math to calculate the glue usage, you'll find that this tower used 0.115 grams less glue than the previous build. That is a very good example of how much weight that assembly technique can save. Again, I'll jump right to the fun part of the live test. 
This tower performed almost identically to the last one, holding 12.824 kilograms. Certainly not enough to get the bonus, and its score would have been 2,474. Here we can clearly see the first thing to fail is one of the cross members on the top layer. These pieces were very light and obviously too weak for this build. The next build will address the top layer cross bracing to see if we can fix that problem. For build number four, I made sure I increased the top cross bracing density to fix the problem of the previous build, but I went a bit lighter on the lower layers to make up for it. You can also see for the first time that I got results from my sanded legs that I wasn't happy with. I started from almost identical source sticks of 1.92 and 1.93 grams, but the final triangular legs ranged from 0.77 grams to 0.95 grams. That was too much variation, so for this build I used another stick at 2.02 grams to get a 0.91 gram final leg. This was when I realized I was going to have to create many more legs to get exactly what I wanted. I'll show that later with build number 5. So much work destroyed in so little time. This one held a fairly disappointing 10.002 kilograms for a score of 1836. The high speed footage clearly shows a problem with the cross bracing again, this time near the bottom. It is becoming very obvious that the cross bracing tends to be the primary problem with these three leg towers. That makes sense as they are longer than what we built with four leg towers, so we really need to beef them up to make sure they survive. Build number five turned out to be the benchmark tower. With all the cross member failures, I decided to go back and basically copy what worked with build number one. The total mass of the cross members were 3.252 grams, which was almost identical to build number one. For the legs, I got more serious about making a library to choose from, and using the rotary sander, I made about 20 of them to pick exactly what I wanted. Here is a log of that process, and you can see that a fairly large range of source sticks create a very similar final results. I attribute that to the density of the balsa not being consistent. We already know that is true throughout a sheet of balsa when cutting sticks, but it's also true within a single stick when sanding away more than half of it. The takeaway here is you'll need to create a library of triangular sticks to get exactly what you want. With a nice library of sticks to choose from, I picked three nearly identical legs around 0.8 grams. The final mass of the tower was 5.950 grams. If this one held the full load, I would be satisfied that it was good enough to be called a benchmark tower. Because this was the final benchmark build, I'll show a couple nice pictures of this tower on the stand right before testing. You've probably already seen the live testing of this tower in the benchmark video, but I'll show the exciting part again here. A sub 6 gram bonus tower holding 18.57 kilograms is pretty impressive and should be a good baseline for you to compare your results and evaluate your design tweaks. Again, this is the same high speed shot as in the benchmark video, but I never get tired of seeing these shots, so I'll show it here as well to be complete. We can see a lower cross member failed first. I was very happy to see this sub 6 gram tower hold over 18 kilograms. I'm sure there was still plenty of optimization available to get an even higher score than this, but I will leave that as an exercise for the reader. I hope this series of videos has helped you think about how you could approach this event. Good luck this season, and I'd love to hear how you and your team does throughout the year. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.